S2 has got two components, aortic and pulmonary components. <coughs> Sorry. S2 is higher pitch than S1. S2 is due to vibration of great, great or great vessels and cardiac structure structures resulting from deceleration of blood flow due to closure of semilunar valves as the semilunar valves close because of the deceleration of blood flow at the end of the systole there is vibration the vibration is initiated by the closure of the semilunar valves the vibration spreads to the great vessels and the cardiac structures and that causes the second heart second heart sound so second heart sound actually corresponds to the closure of the semilunar valves there are two semilunar valves the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve and the closure of aortic component is, uh, is A2 and the closure of the pulmonary component is P2 and these two second heart sounds components can be distinguished uh, separately. First component is A2 and the second component is P2 in a normal person. S2 is split during inspiration and single during expiration in a normal person. That's the most important point. Second, second heart sound is split during inspiration and single during expiration in a normal person. Let us look at the respiratory variation. In a normal person, A2 and P2 will be heard as a single sound during expiration. During inspiration, it is split. During expiration, the A2 P2 interval is equal to or less than 20 milliseconds. During inspiration, it is around 50 to 60 milliseconds so that the sounds can be heard separately. P2 occurs later than A2. The reasons for inspiratory splitting of second heart sound are increased hangout interval of P2. And the, this is due, this is, contributes to 50% of the movement of P2. Increased venous return to the right side of the heart, thereby increasing the duration of the RV ejection time 25% decrease venous return to the left side of the heart resulting in less of ejection time of the left side of the heart contributing to 25% so altogether uh, the most important component which actually contributes to the uh, delay in P2 is the hangout in the well of P2 how can there be an increase in the hangout, hangout in what, what do you mean by hangout interval and uh, how in a patient with uh, in a normal normal person during inspiration the hangout interval can get prolonged any one of you first you should say what is hangout interval two then you should say how in during inspiration the p2 hangout interval is prolonged while the a2 hangout interval does not change So what is hangout interval, which we have been discussing a number of times? What is hangout interval? Anyone of you? Uh, Ronak, Ronak, yes, how would you like to? Yeah. Time. Sir, it's the time from uh, crossover of the great artery pressure uh, to the closure of the valves. Yeah, it is the time duration uh, after the closure of the uh, after the uh, crossover of the yes. pressure between aorta and the uh, the great artery and the corresponding ventricle and the actual closure of the valve. <clears throat> uh, this uh, this uh, is because of the kinetic force. And why in during inspiration hangout interval of uh, P2 is more prolonged than A2? Due to increased venous return. Increased venous return to where? Uh, RV. No, that will result in uh, low, uh, greater ejection time, longer ejection time, and P2 will be delayed because of that. But the hangout interval is different. Hangout interval is uh, depending upon the what? What is the thing which decides the hangout interval? Uh, stretching of the pulmonary vasculature. Stretching, all right, but you have to you have to give the hemodynamic uh, parameter. What is the hemodynamic parameter which will result in a longer hangout interval? Why is it that in uh, 
the uh, the pulmonary artery hangout interval is longer than the aortic hangout interval <coughs> Why it is so? Compliance of uh, pulmonary circulation is more than the more, more. so the uh, there is uh, as compliance is more. Uh, so the ejection of uh, blood from the right ventricle uh, to the pulmonary circulation it takes more time rather than the systemic means uh, systemic circulation. No, no, that's not correct. <clears throat> You have to tell me what is what what are the factors which actually decide the hangout interval. Most important factor. <clears throat> Anyone of you? It is actually the, the the resistance against which the blood is being pumped. The the the, the which is actually the peripheral resistance in the systemic circulation and pulmonary vascular resistance in the pulmonary circulation. What is the systemic vascular resistance in wood units? Normal? 20. Yeah, around 15 to 20. Up to 20 it can go, usually around 17, 18. What is the pulmonary vascular resistance? 2, 2 to 3. Two. No, no, no. 1 to 2. Not 2 to 3, 1 to 2. 1 to 2. Uh, the systemic vascular resistance is around uh, around uh, 10 to 12 times more than the systemic pulmonary vascular resistance. Mm -hmm. So, because of that, the uh, pulmonary artery hangout in interval is much more than the systemic artery uh, aortic hangout hangout interval. But during inspiration, what happens? During inspiration, the the lungs expand, the uh, the pulmonary capillaries open up. And that will result in further reduction in the pulmonary vascular resistance. And the pulmonary vascular resistance drops, the hangout interval also get prolonged. So that is the most important thing which contributes to the uh, splitting of the second heart zone, which almost contributes 50% of the prolongation of the uh, P2 closure time. And further, the next two points are increased venous return to the right side of the heart during inspiration because of the suction effect of the endothoracic, negative endothoracic pressure, the pulmonary veins drain into the, uh, the, the systemic veins drain into the right atrium and the RV ejection time gets prolonged because of the higher stroke volume, 25%. Simultaneously, because during inspiration, the, the pulmonary capillaries open up, everything, uh, the pulmonary vascular bed becomes low, larger that will result in more volume being retained in the lung vasculature and less of venous return onto the left side of the heart. That will result in, uh, uh, result in uh, the shorter left ventricular ejection time. And all these three contribute to the splitting of the second heart zone. 50% by the hangout interval prolongation, 25% uh, each increased venous return to the right side and decreased venous return onto the left side. Uh, excuse me, sir. Oh. Sir, can we say that, that diastolic pressure difference is also less on the right side as compared to left side? So, left side heart got to this earlier. Uh, are the diastolic and pulmonary diastolic pressures are very less? If so, it is hang on to larger. Can we say this point or? No, no, you see, uh, diastolic pressure is actually the reflection of the vascular resistance. Oh, yes, sir. So, so, so obviously you are telling the same thing because when the the, the pulmonary vascular resistance actually is, uh, is indirectly reflects the pulmonary diastolic pressure. Yes. Sir. When the pulmonary diastolic pressure, pulmonary artery diastolic pressure is lower, obviously means pulmonary vascular resistance is lower, and the patient can have a longer hangout interval. Uh, so, that, that's what I want. Can we say in this verse also, sir, or uh, that? And the corrective yes, rate is corrective rate is pulmonary vascular resistance. Okay, okay, sir. You have to use the word correct. Pulmonary vascular resistance is much lower than the systemic vascular resistance, and that governs the uh, the hangout hangout hang oh. interval. Oh. And during inspiration, there is a further opening up of the capillaries. Small small vessels open out, and that will further reduce the pulmonary vascular resistance, and that will result in a longer hangout interval in a patient during inspiration. Okay. That contributes to fifty percent. 
ഓക്കെ ഇന്റൻസിറ്റി ഓഫ് സെക്കൻഡ് ഹാർട്ട് സോൺ ഹൗ വിൽ യു അസസ് ദ ഇന്റൻസിറ്റി ഓഫ് സെക്കൻഡ് ഹാർട്ട് സോൺ പി ടു മെത്തേഡ്സ് ബൈ വിച്ച് യു ക്യാൻ അസസ് ദ ഇന്റൻസിറ്റി ഓഫ് സെക്കൻഡ് ഹാർട്ട് സോൺ ലെറ്റ് സേ പി ടു ഹൗ വിൽ യു അസസ് പി ടു വൺ ഇസ് യു ക്യാൻ പാൽപ്പേറ്റ് ഇഫ് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് ഹാർട്ട് സോൺ ഇസ് പാൽപ്പബിൾ എസ്പെഷ്യലി ദി ദി പൾമോണറി കോമ്പണൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് ഹാർട്ട് സോൺ ഇസ് പാൽപ്പബിൾ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എൻ ഇൻഡിക്കേഷൻ ദ പൾമോണറി സെക്കൻഡ് സൗണ്ട് ഇസ് ലൗഡ് ദ സിമിലർലി അയോട്ടി കോമ്പണൻറ്റ് ഓൾസോ so palpability usually indicates the the sound is loud but you should you have to exercise a caution in thin chest wall individuals p2 may be palpable even when the sound is normal so that's the most important thing you should remember in a very thin chest wall person the p2 can be palpable even in presence of a normal uh, p2 next is on auscultation auscultation how will you uh, assess the second heart sound p2 p2 can be considered loud if if it is louder than a2 in the pulmonary area if the if you compare a2 with p2 and if the a2 p2 is equal to a2 or greater than a2 that obviously means the p2 is loud if the p2 is audible at apex usually pulmonary component of the second heart sound is restricted to the pulmonary area and sometimes it may be heard up to the tricuspid area but never it is audible at the apex or at the aortic area if it is audible at the from apex it usually indicates that the apex is formed by the right ventricle as can happen in a patient with asd or in patients with severe pulmonary artery hypertension a p2 can be audible at the apex so you should carefully look for whether the p2 is audible at the apex and audibility of p2 at the apex always may, should make you suspect that it could be a case of atrial septal defect p2 audible at aortic area except in mal position see if the p2 is audible at aortic area that also indicates that the p2 is louder except in mal position sometimes in uh, dextro position and all the the uh, the uh, pulmonary area may come under the second uh, uh, near the uh, right second intercostal space and so the audibility of p2 in the right second intercostal space may not have any bearing in relation to the loudness of the second heart sound so in a patient where the p2 is audible in the uh, in, a, in in the aortic area if it does not have any um, uh, cardiac mal positions then obviously it makes you suspect that the p2 is loud a uh, loud p2 usually indicate pulmonary arterial hypertension so p2 in comparison to a2 you can compare with uh, a2 the so the p2 can be soft in this dysplastic pulmonary van can you mention one situation where there is dysplastic pulmonary valve dysplastic pulmonary valve some congenital one uh, hereditary disorder tetralogy of pan nunan syndrome yes you are, you are right what is it nunan syndrome nunan syndrome in nunan syndrome there can be dys- dysplastic pulmonary valve that can be associated pulmonary stenosis but the valve is dysplastic and then the a2 is extremely feeble stenosed pulmonary valve the stenosed pulmonary valve also uh, P, uh, p2 is feeble what is the reason what is the reason why the the, the, uh, the p2 is feeble in uh, in pulmonary stenosis lack of flow is not occurring hmm flow across the valve is Yes, the, usually in uh, significant stenosis, the pulmonary uh, pressure is, uh, the, the pressure head which can close the pulmonary valve is, uh, uh, is uh, less than normal. That will result in less of uh, uh, air position, less, of clo- uh, less, uh, lo- less prominent closure of the pulmonary valve. One, one two, second. because of the restricted uh, opening of the pulmonary the pulmonary valve does not completely open out it is restricted uh, opening moment and because of the rest- restricted opening moment when it closes that also is restricted closure resulting in a feeble p2 so in patients with pulmonary stenosis you can get a uh, 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 feeble p2 and pulmonary valve is usually does not calcify so calcification is not an important reason for feeble p2 but dysplastic pulmonary valve can happen and that can give rise to feeble p2 posterior p2 a pulmonary artery if the pulmonary artery is posterior 
as can occur can you mention one or two conditions where the permanent artery is posterior okay transposition of great arteries transposition of great arteries one two not exactly posterior but relatively posterior usually permanent artery is anterior you are where, where it can be side by side what is the situation where pulmonary artery and aorta can be side by side drv drv that also especially in tra transposition great arteries where the pulmonary artery is posterior the p2 component of the second heart zone may not be transmitted to the chest wall and so it may, it may be feeble or it may may not be audible at all and you may hear a single uh, aortic component of the second heart zone only emphysema emphysematous chest if the chest is emphysematous then again the uh, p2 can be feeble and also in patients with the thick chest wall the the uh, the second heart sound can be feeble because it interferes with the transmission of the uh, the sound especially the pulmonary component of the sound on to the chest wall and when you auscultate you get a feeble second heart sound in uh, a2 now let's look at a2 a2 can be loud in systemic uh, hypertension that's the commonest cause of loud a2 dilated aorta example in some tetralogy of fallow sometimes the aorta is huge and anterior and you can get a loud uh, second heart sound including sometimes click marfan syndrome sometimes when the aorta is dilated you can get a loud uh, second heart sound aortic aneurysm severity aortic aneurysm you some sometimes you can get a loud second heart sound which is known as tambor second heart sound so it's a tambor a2 why what is this tambor where, where did this come na name come from any one of you musical instrument yes it's an not this a musical instrument where is it used in which continent this is a musical instrument uh, used to used in uh, some of the african countries and it has got a uh, very uh, this tambour gives a very loud noise high pitched loud noise and the a2 of patients with uh, luitic aortic aneurysm is compared to the the uh, the uh, sharp high pitched noise of tambour so very often the tambour a2 is palpable also when the aorta is anterior as can happen in transpositional great arteries the a2 component can be loud abrupt closing motion of a palpable domed stenotic aortic valve sometimes rarely in a patient with a bicuspid aortic valve which can give rise to some degree of stenosis sometimes the second heart sound can be really loud this thought to be due to a, a sudden uh, uh, tightening or the uh, uh, sudden closer movement of the pliable aortic valve from the domed position and whenever you find the patient has got aortic stenosis and the second heart sound is loud then you should always suspect the possibility of uh, of bicuspid aortic valve which may be also associated with an ejection click so sometimes in patients with aortic stenosis also you may rarely get a loud a2 and is thought to be due to doming back of the domed aortic uh, the aortic valve as can happen in patients with bicuspid aortic valve soft a2 calcific aortic valve patients with aortic regurgitation especially valvular aortic regurgitation thick chest wall emphysema the chest and patients in shock state patients in shock state as a very feeble a2 what will happen to the uh, p2 in a shock in shock state what can happen to p2 in a, in shock state any one of you what are the causes of shock what is the classification of shock it can be cardiogenic shock hypovolemic shock uh, uh, septic shock or it can be an obstructive shock. Obstructive. <coughs> so, uh, what is the difference in P2 
between uh, all these four, or at least uh, um, uh, three of them. What happens to P2 in, in uh, cardiogenic shock? It becomes soft. Why, why it becomes soft? Uh, Can you define what you mean by cardiogenic shock? What is cardiogenic shock? Uh, sir, cardiogenic shock uh, is a uh, condition in which a uh, uh, patient have low blood pressure, mean, uh, mean blood pressure is less than 60, uh, uh, 60 millimeter of Hg uh, with uh, associated with cold kami extremities, low perfusion state uh, to vital organs like kidney, brain and uh, 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 kidney, brain and uh, 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 can, you, can you define shock and then you define cardiogenic shock, define shock. Uh, shock. So shock uh, is, uh, is a condition of, uh, which uh, is a multi-systemic disorder condition in which a blood pressure is reduced to a, uh, systolic blood pressure is less than uh, 90 millimeter of Hg. No, no that's, uh, not right. that, that's not right. In some of the shock states, you can get a, a systolic blood pressure 120. Still, the patient can be in shock state. Uh, so, showing the uh, signs of hypoperfusion, oh. uh, uh, like uh, altered mental st mental status, hyper, uh, low perfusion to, uh, to uh, kidney to reduce urine output, mm. uh, uh, cold kami extremity, mm. uh, uh, and uh, uh, tachycardia mm. associated with tachycardia. Tachycardia is not a must. Mm. Uh, sometimes patients with bradycardia can go for shock state also. Yes. Mm. Shock, shock is a cardiocirculatory status where there is hypoperfusion of the organs mm -hmm. and is characterized by cold clam extremities, mental obtundation, and you decrease your output. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, if, if the uh, hypoperfusion is prolonged, that can result in organ damage mm -hmm. and that can ultimately lead to the death of the organism. Uh, that is shock state. So from that, say some of the shock states, you can get a blood pressure of 120 per 100, where there is a low, very low pulse pressure, and the uh, the the uh, the uh, systolic pressure can be 120. But most important thing is other points that uh, there is a organ perfusion is impaired, and the organ per re reduced organ perfusion is assessed by mental obtundation, cold climate extremities, and decrease urine output. What, what decrease your output means? What do you mean by decrease your output? Uh, uh, decrease. Uh, uh, what is the quantity? Uh, sir, less than uh, thir uh, 30 ml per hour. Urine output. Urine output. Okay. Anybody? Any, anybody else? Would you like to modify it? It's usually 20 ml per hour. Okay. So, uh, usually around less than 250, uh, 20 ml per hour, that is the quantity, less than 500 ml. Uh, uh, less than 20 ml per hour or the whole day, uh, 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 the urine output is less than 400 ml per hour. Yeah, five, up to 500 you can go. Yes. 20, uh, less than 20 ml, but ideally you should uh, observe it every hour, that oh. is less than 20 ml per hour. Okay, then you define cardiogenic shock. What is cardiogenic shock? Uh, due to uh, severe uh, 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 severe LV systolic dysfunction, the blood pressure remains less than 90 millimeter of Hg, or mean uh, mean pressure remains less than 60 millimeter of Hg, associated with uh, uh, or organ hypoperfusion signs like uh, mental altered mental status. Well, all those things are there. We already said this shock. Yes. Do I want the definition of the cardiogenic shock. Uh, Low blood pressure, uh, low blood pressure means uh, less than 90 millimeter of Hg. Oh, and, uh, some people say, uh, say 80 millimeters, uh, systolic blood pressure less than 80 millimeters. There are three points. No, no, one is not enough. There are three points in the, when you define cardiogenic shock. Uh, blood pressure, uh, then uh, acidosis. 
Uh, no, those are all because of the shock state. That okay. can happen in any shock state. But yeah. what is the special feature of cardiogenic shock? Any one of you? And uh, yeah, yes, sir, yes. And uh, with uh, uh, inotropic support, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the or uh, it is not responded to uh, a fluid challenge or inotropic support. What did you say? It will. Uh, it is not responding to fluid challenge or inotropic support. Uh, no, that is right, but you, first of all, you should define the cardiogenic shock. Okay. Because in cardiogenic shock, you cannot, the fluid challenge is not the treatment. Yes, yes. Any one of you, what, hemodynamically, how will you define cardiogenic shock? Anything to do with the pulmonary wet pressure? Anything to do with cardiac output? Yes, sir. Uh, cardiac output uh, remain less. Cardiac index. Cardiac index. Uh, yes, cardiac index? Uh, less than 1.8. Uh, 1.8? 1. 1. Without, uh, without any support. No, 1.8 what? Uh, Liter per minute per meter square. Okay, 1.8 liters per minute per meter square body surface area. Okay, right. Yeah, what is the pulmonary pulmonary uh, wedge pressure? Uh, it is uh, uh, more than 18. Very good. It's easy. Pulmonary is more than. It says very easy to remember. Cardiogenic shock is defined as a shock state due to a cardiac cause. That's the most important point. Mm. It has got three hemodynamic parameters. One, systolic blood pressure less than 80. Cardiac output less than 1.8 uh, liters per uh, minute per meter square body surface area. And pulmonary artery wedge pressure more than 18 millimeters of mercury. So all are related to eight. 80, yes. 1.8, 18. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Would you understand? Easy to remember. Yes, sir. Less than 80, 1.8, and 8. So when the pulmonary vascular resistance is, uh, the pulmonary wet pressure is 18, what will happen to the pulmonary artery pressure? Also increase. Also increase. Then what will happen to uh, 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 P2? Increase. 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 Yes. So in a patient with cardiogenic shock, P2 can be louder. Okay. But you know, what type of shock P2 will be feeble? Obstructive shock. Obstructive or hypovolemic shock? Hypo In hypovolemic shock, the pulmonary uh, capillary wedge pressure is lower mm -hmm. and the pulmonary artery pressure is low and the P2 can be feeble. So in a patient with uh, cardiogenic shock, P2 can be loud, but A2 is feeble in all types of shock. Because the, uh, the stroke volume, the cardiac output, everything is depressed. So, P2 behaves depending upon the cause of shock. In a patient with cardiogenic shock, the P2 can be loud. But in a patient with a hypovolemic shock, the P2 will be feeble. What are the mechanisms of cardiogenic shock? The cardiac cause. Can you tell me a few uh, cardiac causes uh, or classify it into uh, reasons for the element of cardiogenic shock? Acute myocardial infarction. Yes, LV dysfunction. Okay, one. One. Acute LV dysfunction, may have acute myocardial infarction, myocarditis, whatever it is. One, two. In acute myocardial infarction, can anything else can happen which can result in cardiogenic shock? Arrhythmia. Arrhythmia. Arrhythmia, very good. Arrhythmia, especially with the atrial fibrillation. Some of these, especially in a patient with the uh, uh, RV infarction, if there is atrial fibrillation, they can go to a shock state. Or sometimes hypo, uh, patients with uh, RV infarction, they can quickly go in for a shock state. So, arrhythmia can give rise to shock state. Three. Mechanical. Very good. Mechanical complications. Uh, papillary muscle rupture or uh, 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 VSR, ventricular septal rupture, or patients with free wall rupture all can go for shock state. And in addition, uh, the cardiogenic shock can be, some people classify it as an obstructive shock where there can be a cardiac tamponade. Patients with cardiac tamponade 
it can have a shock state. Some people consider it as an obstruction because it, it obstructs the, uh, 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 the blood coming to the, uh, to, the cardi to the heart and that can be the cause for a cardiogenic shock. So, cardiogenic shock and uh, hypovolemic shock have a different intensity of the sec pulmonary compound of the second heart shock. In cardiogenic shock, actually the P2 can be louder and patients with uh, hypovolemic shock, the P2 will be feeble. Okay, splitting of the second heart sound. Splitting of the second heart sound is the most important thing that you have to uh, make out when you are auscultating for a second heart sound. It can be normal split, wide variable split, wide fixed split, single S2, paradoxical split and close split. Now let's look at one after another. Normal split we have already explained. Normal split, normal split of S2 in, in suspected case of congenital heart disease indicate mild lesion. So in a patient, when normal split in a uh, in a congenital heart disease usually indicate that it is a mild lesion. Can be small VST, or it can be a small AST, or it can be uh, uh, mild pulmonary stenosis. All these things can sometimes okay, will not have any significant hemodynamic effect and make you raise a normal second heart sound. So a normal second heart sound in a, in a child with a congenital heart disease usually indicate that the lesion is not very significant. If the patient is having normal second heart sound and the child is cyanotic, what is your diagnosis? Normally split second heart sound with deep cyanosis. Anyone of you? PG. PG usually because of the pulmonary artery is posterior, very often you get it as a single second heart sound. In the, that can happen in pulmonary artery venous fistula. In patients with pulmonary artery venous fistula, uh, S2 may behave normally and the patient may be deeply cyanosed. So when you are finding the patient deeply cyanosed and you are getting no significant murmurs over the precordium, then you should carefully auscultate all over the lung field to detect the murmur of artery venous fistula. And the second heart sound can be normally split. Okay, wide variable split. S2 is split during inspiration and expiration. However, split narrows during expiration. This can occur in the following conditions. There are two mechanisms of production of a variable split of the second heart sound, wide split of the second heart sound, which may be due to delayed closure of the pulmonary valve or it may be due to early closure of the aortic valve. Delayed closure of the pulmonary valve makes the uh, pulmonary component uh, later and the split can be, there can be wide splitting of the second heart sound. But uh, the split can be moving normal. Uh, the, it is variable split. Similarly, if the if the uh, closure of the aortic valve occurs earlier, then also there can be wide split. So the conditions where there can be delayed closure of the pulmonary valve, resulting in wide splitting of the second heart sound, are right bundle branch block, pulmonary stenosis, Epstein's anomaly, moderate RV dysfunction, partial. Anomalous pulmonary venous drainage with intact intraatrial septum, uh, left ventricular pacing or left ventricular premature contractions. All these can give rise to wide splitting of the second heart sound, which is which is variable, which is moving with breathing, and is due to a delayed closure of the pulmonary valve. Now, looking at the uh, due to an early closure of the aortic valve, mitral regurgitation, large VSD, type A WPW syndrome. LV pacing with LV VPC. Actually, in LV pacing, it can be due to the early, due to delayed closure of the pulmonary valve because the uh, initially LV is stimulated and the uh, RV stimulation occurs later, and so there is a delayed contraction of the RV, resulting in delayed closure of the pulmonary valve. At the same time, LV stimulator is getting stimulated first, contraction is over, that is giving rise to early closure of the aortic valve. So in in LV pacing or LV premature contractions, it can be due to both the mechanisms where there can be a delayed closure of the pulmonary valve or there can be an early closure of the aortic valve. Could you understand that point? Gaurav, are you there? Uh, yes, sir, yes. Sir. Could you get that point? Because in uh, LV pacing and LV VPC, it, it can be both the mechanisms can contribute to wide splitting of the second heart. Okay. 
Now white fixed split. The split remains the same in both phases of respiration. The fixed split must be appreciated during normal breathing, both in lying and standing position. That's the most important point. When you want to be, you you, want, you should be certain that the patient is having a, a fixed splitting of the second heart sound. That is to be appreciated both during lying down as well as standing up. The patient should have a splitting of the second heart sound when the patient is lying as well as patient when the patient is standing. And uh, uh, conditions associated with white splitting of the second heart sound, white fixed splitting of the second heart sound is atrial septal defect and severe RV dysfunction where RV cannot receive any more blood. So that can receive a result in a white fixed splitting of the second heart sound, AST or severe RV dysfunction. Single S2, only one sound is audible during inspiration and expiration. There are a number of reasons for this to happen. How, what are the mechanisms where there can be single S2? Both A2 and P2 occur together. Example, Ace and Munger VSD. That's the best example where A2 and P2 are occurring together because in Ace and, in Ace and Munger VSD, the right ventricular systolic pressure, left ventricular systolic pressure, pulmonary systolic pressure, and aortic systolic pressure are all are the same. And that can result in a, a, a single second heart sound because both A2 and P2 occur together. PA is posterior, permanent is posterior, and hence P2 not audible, and only A2 is audible, example, transposition of great arteries. A2 loud and P2 very feeble, and because of the loud A2, the feeble P2 cannot be appreciated as can occur in the of fellow. Calcific or dysplastic valve, example, aortic stenosis, calcific aortic stenosis, dysplastic valve as can occur in uh, Newlin syndrome in pulmonary stenosis. The, sometimes the uh, only sound that you hear may be the other well sound. In calcific aortic stenosis, you may be hearing the pulmonary common or second heart sound. And in this plastic pulmonary well, you may be hearing the uh, the aortic common or second heart sound. Single well, when there is only a single well, you hear only single sound. As can occur in pulmonary atresia, trungus arteriosus, or aortic atresia. Marmor ma masking one sound. Uh, as can happen in patients with aortic stenosis or patients with pulmonary stenosis, where the uh, the murmur may be so prolonged that the other sound, for example, in aortic stenosis, the pulmonary command of the second heart sound is masked inside the murmur. Similarly, in patients with uh, 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 pulmonary stenosis, the uh, in patients with aortic stenosis, the pulmonary command may be masked and only the aortic common may be audible. So in severe aortic stenosis of the aortic valve or pulmonary, pulmonary valve, the, uh, the corresponding uh, A2 or P2 can be masked by the, uh, the, the opposite A2 or P2 can be masked by the murmur. And what you hear only is the, uh, the, the delayed closure of the, uh, the stenosed valve. For example, when you hear the second heart sound in aortic stenosis, that you may be hearing the delayed closure of the aortic valve in a patient with pulmonary stenosis, you may be hearing the delayed closure of the pulmonary valve. Thick chest to all emphysematous chest, the P2 may not be audible at all. And what you may be hearing is only the second heart sound, uh, which is due to the aortic common of the second heart sound. So single and second heart sound, there are many mechanisms and you should remember all these mechanisms and many conditions where the single heart sound can be single. Uh, sir, oh. uh, 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 in ASD wide uh, fixed split. So, oh. uh, 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 so, uh, so this ex uh, this question is asking exam uh, if it, if there is a congenital case. So, what is the best explanation, sir, for that? Wide oh. for a wide split fixed uh, splitting in uh, ASD. Uh, anyone of you would you, anybody would like to uh, discuss that point? Why there is a fixed splitting of the second heart sound in patients with uh, ASD? Anyone of you? What happens? So, see, what is the reason for splitting of the second heart sound during inspiration? Uh, in, uh, so, the increase of uh, pulmonary hangout in interval. Okay. So, uh, so the, that will cause the. Uh, Inspiratory splitting of the S2. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, 
there are three mechanisms one you already increase hang out interval increase uh, uh, blood flow to the right side okay and decrease blood flow to the left side so okay. there, well, there are three reasons which will contribute to white splitting the splitting of the second heart sound during inspiration in a patient with the ast what happens Uh, in uh, during inspiration, what happens? Increase of uh, 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 RV inflow. Uh, yeah, increase. there is an increased venous return onto the right side of the heart. Right, right side. When there is an increased venous return to the right side of the heart, what will happen to the uh, left to right side? It will also increase. The no, left to right side cannot increase because more volume of blood is coming already coming to the to the right side of the heart, and hence the 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 shunt which is uh, coming from uh, left side to the right side of no, the heart that, is, no, sir, that sir. will be shared. Shared, yes, yes, sir, yes. So what will happen is that uh, even though there is an increased venous return to the right side, of mm -hmm. course uh, that that will be compensated by a decreased uh, uh, the decrease in the left to right shunt. Okay, sir. So because of that. The uh, the blood uh, the increase quantity of blood coming to the right side is partly neutralized, and the decrease in the blood coming to the left side of the heart during inspiration is also partly neutralized, resulting in a balanced flow to the right side as well as right uh, left side, which is actually sharing. Now, whatever mm -hmm. is the extra volume of blood coming during inspiration is actually shared by the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Okay, sir. What happens to hang out interval? Hangout interval does not change because the, in a patient with ASD, this is a large volume of blood already flowing to the lungs, and that will result in all the capillaries, all the uh, the blood vessels, everything in the uh, pulmonary system is already filled to the maximum. Mm -hmm. So it cannot have any further reduction in the further pulmonary vascular resistance, and hang hangout interval does not change much. <laughs> so because of these three mechanisms, the split remains the same both during inspiration as well as during expiration. Is it clear to you? Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, is it clear to everybody? If you have got a doubt, you can ask now. So I can uh, repeat it so that uh, it is very clear to you. Because this is a question which the examiners can ask you in the in the examination. But you should be able to explain how in a patient with ASD. I will repeat: in a patient with ASD, there is an increase in the venous return during inspiration onto the right side. But then, when there is an increased venous return onto the right side, the venous return is uh, shared between the left and the right, and the the shunt from left to right comes down, resulting in sharing of the increased venous return between the right ventricle and the left left ventricle. Hence, the sound does not the relationship of the A to and P to does not change. At the same time, the normal hangout interval increase uh, in the in a patient who is taking no. Uh, in, uh, Uh, in a deep breath or uh, taking a normal inspiration does not happen because of the increased pulmonary blood flow la uh, two or three times the systemic flow may be flowing into the pulmonary system resulting in opening up of the pulmonary uh, pulmonary arteries pulmonary capillaries all are opened out and further decrease in the pulmonary vascular resistance is not possible and the hangout interval of the pulmonary uh, valve does not change So, because of these three uh, these reasons, the split of the second heart sound remains fixed in a patient with ASD. What is the mechanism that fixes splitting in severe RV dysfunction? What is the mechanism? Due to uh, severe RV dysfunction, uh, uh, RV is not able to pump more blood to the pul uh, pulmonary vascular bed. Uh, bed. It cannot, uh, it cannot receive more blood. More, more blood. Because during inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, even though uh, more blood may be flowing towards the, towards uh, mm -hmm. the, towards the, uh, uh, towards the uh, right side of the heart, mm -hmm. it cannot accept more blood, and more. hence the volume of blood which is pumped out from the RV remains the same. The volume mm -hmm. of the blood coming back to the pul uh, LV remains the same. Everything remains the same. Mm -hmm. So these patients can have a wide pixel split of the second heart. Any doubts uh, about the uh, wide splitting of the second heart, wide fixed split, and also about the single second heart sound? Hmm. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Yes. Paradoxical split. Paradoxical paradoxical splitting can be of three types. One type one, single S2 during inspiration, 
and split during expiration. This is the classical paradoxical splitting. Opposite to what is happening normally. So there is split the split second heart zone during expiration and single second heart zone during inspiration, which is just the opposite of what is happening in a normal normal person where the S2 is split during inspiration and single during expiration. Type 2, there will be A2, P2. That is A2 occurring first and P2 occurring later during inspiration. That's normal. And P2, A2, where P2 is occurring early and A2 is delayed during expression, which will be had as fixed, fixed split. So A2, P2 and P2, A2. The gap between A2 and P2 during inspiration will be more than 20, 20 or more than equal to or more than 30 milliseconds. And P2, A2 where P2 is occurring early and P2 occurring later uh, during expiration can be, the interval can be uh, more than 30 milliseconds resulting in the uh, an auscultatory phenomenon of uh, wide splitting of the second heart zone. That is a wide fixed split. Type 3, there will be A2, P2 during inspiration and P2, A2 during expiration similar to the type 2 but the gap between A2 and P2 and P2 and A2 is less than 30 milliseconds, so it behave, behaves like a single second heart zone. So, in so uh, uh, the splitting, paradoxical splitting, there can be the classical paradoxical splitting where the S2 is single during inspiration and split during expression, or it can be wide fixed split where uh, where the second sound appears fixed split because of the A2, P2, and P2, A2 uh, gap being more than 30 milliseconds and finally it may appear as the single second heart sound where A2, P2 and P2, A2 interval is less than 30 milliseconds. So the, in that situation how will you make, how will you differentiate whether it is a fixed split or whether it is a paradoxical split and behaving like a fixed split or a paradoxical split behaving like a second heart sound as a single second heart sound. Any one of you? I have written the explanation. Paradoxical split can be appreciated by Valsalva Manor. Valsalva Manor, the spelling is wrong. Valsalva Manor. Uh, uh, what happens when you do a Valsalva Manor? In strained phase, the paradoxical split widens and split narrows during release phase. While opposite happens, with normally split S2. In the, with this normal, normal pattern, single second sound or um, uh, uh, fixed split second heart sound, whatever it is, the behavior of a paradoxical split is entirely different from a, a normal fixed split or normal uh, single sense, uh, a normal single sound. Can you explain that? Any one of you, when you do Valsalva Manor, how the paradoxical split behaves different from normal split? Any one of you? In in paradox in in, in Valsalva Manor, when you are doing uh, during the <coughs> strain phase, what happens to Venus return? What happens to Venus return during the strain phase? Decreases. Decreases. When Venus return on the right side decreases. So what will happen to P2? Early closure. Early closure. P2 becomes early. So in a normal person, when the P2 becomes, oh, uh, 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 in a person with paradoxical splitting, when P2 occurs earlier, what will be the, you know, what will be the pattern? P2. P2, A2. No, P2A2 is there already because of the paradoxical splitting. P2 is becoming earlier. What will happen to paradoxical splitting? It narrows yeah. Duration, duration widens. It widens because duration widens. Uh, in paradoxical splitting it is P2A2 and P2 is becoming earlier. So paradoxical split, split will become wider. Widen. Wider during Strain phase of Valsalva. What happened in a normal person? 
because a2 becomes earlier uh, sorry p2 becomes earlier so a2 p2 interval becomes narrow narrow so that's what is happening and during uh, during strain phase in well selva maneuver in a paradoxical splitting the the uh, the gap widens it becomes wider and in a person the normal person the the a2 the, the split second heart zone becomes narrow so when you are in doubt you can always even in patients with type 2 and type 3 when you are in doubt you can always make the patient do a al selva maneuver or when you are in even in, even in type 1 you feel that it is paradoxically split but you are not certain about it then you can make the patient do a al selva maneuver how do you do a al selva maneuver what is meant by al selva maneuver and how do you do it what is well selva manor it's an expiration against a closed glottis yes very good forced expiration against a closed glottis and how can you make the patient do that on the wet side how can you do it first thing is uh, uh, most ideal thing is to make the patient um, blow into a mercury manometer and raise the pressure in the mercury manometer up to 40 mm of it and ask the patient to maintain at that level for 10 seconds mm -hmm. if that is not possible you can ask the patient to make the uh, close the mouth and the nose and ask him to breathe out forcefully you should not the air should not escape but his mouth and uh, nose should be closed and he has to breathe out forcefully mm -hmm. or you can sometimes you can even ask the patient to uh, take a deep breath in and uh, strain to breathe out at the same time uh, not allowing the air to come out and which it, uh, it should be kept for 10 seconds and then that is the strain phase of alselva where you can easily appreciate the paradoxical split conditions associated with paradoxical split are conditions due to delay of a2 a2 is delayed this can occur in left mandel branch block severe aortic stenosis lv dysfunction aortic stenosis hypertrophic cardiomyopathy aortic regurgitation how can there be <clears throat> a delay in a2 in aortic regurgitation anyone of you PDA, anemia, thyrotoxicosis, all can give rise to delayed A2. What is the mechanism? Flow occurring across the wall. The in the air, regurgitant flow is crossing across the wall in the diastole, so delaying okay. it closure. Okay, one mechanism is that the, the stroke volume is more, and that will result in a longer rejection time. and the uh, the aortic pulmonary the aortic valve well can close la la uh, later but that is not the most important reason most important reason is any one of you prolonged system what happens to what happens to patients uh, the diastolic pressure uh, in a, in patients with aortic regurgitation pda anemia thyrotoxicosis what happens to the aortic diastolic pressure It reduces. It is reduced. So the diastolic pressure is a, as you have previously said, is a reflection of the pulmonary, uh, so systemic vascular resistance. So when the pulmonary mm -hmm. systemic vascular resistance drops, what will happen to the hangout interval? Increases. Increases. So in patients with AR, patients with PDA, patients with anemia, patients with thyrotoxicosis, there is an increase in the hangout interval, and that will result in a delayed closure of the aortic valve. and ultimately that can result in paradoxical splitting hmm. rv pacing is rv pacing there is a uh, the uh, the right one record actually uh, uh, closes first closes closes first oh. and uh, the the uh, the, the yeah. lv gets uh, depolarized later and that can result in a delayed a2 uh, yeah. the 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 A2, the, the, there can be paradoxical splitting of second heart sound in type B WPW syndrome and also in 
tricuspid regurgitation because of the early P2. Can anyone of you explain it? Type B WPW syndrome and TR in the early P2 can happen. So because the bundle is connecting right sided in type B. Oh. Bundle of Kent is right sided. Yes. So so the conduction of RV occurs first. First. Yeah. And is completed first, resulting in early closure of the pulmonary valve. Taking paradoxical splitting. In the tricuspid regurgitation. So the forward flow across the uh, from RV to forward flow is low volume because of most of the regurgitation. Yeah, because uh, RV has got two outlets, one to the uh, right ventricle, uh, right, right atrium, and the other to the pulmonary artery. Because of the, there are two outlets, the uh, RV ejection is uh, completed earlier, and that will result in an early closure of the pulmonary valve, and the patients can have paradoxical P2. early P2, which will result in paradoxical splitting of the second heart. Cell. So, the paradoxical splitting can be due to delayed A2 or an early P2. The, 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 the early P2 is similar to what is happening in patients with mitral regurgitation where A2 occurs early, that will result in a wide splitting of the second heart zone. A close split, the uh, two sounds are uh, appreciated as single sounds. When the interval between the sounds is equal to or more than, sorry, two sounds are appreciated as separate sounds when the interval between the sounds is equal to or more than 30 milliseconds. Any sound which is uh, separated by equal to or more than 30 milliseconds, more definitely more than 30 milliseconds, it is heard as a two separate sounds. When the second noise is sharp and loud, then the two sounds can be separately appreciated even when the interval between the sounds is equal to 20 milliseconds. So that's the most important point. When the second component of uh, two sounds second component is sharp and loud, you will be able to appreciate the two sounds as separate two sounds even when the separation is only 20 milliseconds. This can happen in patients of pulmonary arterial hypertension. In patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension, the P2 can become sharp and loud. The hangout interval of P2 becomes less because of the increase in the pulmonary vascular resistance. So A2, P2 uh, gap becomes less and it may be as short as 20 milliseconds. And since the second heart sound, second common of the sound, P2 is very sharp and loud, you will be you will be appreciating an A2, P2 even when the gap is only 20 milliseconds. So that is known as a close splitting of the second heart sound. Some authorities do not uh, uh, accept this concept, but uh, if the examiner asks you what do you mean by close split, you can explain by saying that when the second component of the split sound is sharp and sh uh, sh sharp and loud, the uh, the split can be appreciated even when the gap between the two sounds is 20 milliseconds or less, not less, up to 20 milliseconds, and then uh, the split will be appreciated as close split. This can happen in patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension. Any doubts about the paradoxical splitting? Type uh, type of paradoxical splitting. Some some of the examiners can ask you what are the three types of uh, paradoxical splitting. Uh, type one, type two, type three. And you should be able to uh, answer the question if the examiner asks you how can you make out whether it is a, a real uh, a paradoxical split, single second sound, or whether it is a, 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 a paradox a second heart sound. Uh, single sound because of other reasons and you can do a well, selva manur and from that you can uh, uh, definitely make out whether it is a uh, paradoxical second, second heart sound or it is a normal sound no, no paradoxical speed but appreciate as a single second heart sound excuse me sir uh, sir, by hand grip can we make it out or not possible sir? hand grip will also increase the afterload After load increase can make the uh, make the sound slightly uh, the air two can occur slightly earlier. Uh, hand grip can be mentioned or well, survive Hand grip can actually increase the systemic vascular resistance a bit, but uh, there is no, no no change in venous return. Uh, 
So the uh, there can be slight increase in the hangout interval, and oh no, so, sorry, a slight decrease in the hangout interval. So A2 can occur slightly earlier. A2 occurring earlier may not help you to diagnose. P2 oh. earlier will be the one which will help you to diagnose. So uh, hand grip may not be the the best method. Best method would be uh, uh, well salva manner where the venous return can really come down. So that P2 can occur early, and the paradoxical split can become much more prominent. If you want, you if the examiner asks, uh, can I can any and then there manner, then you can say say by saying that when you do a hand grip, uh, the uh, A2 can occur earlier, and the paradoxical split can split can actually become uh, less pronounced. But then you will never know whether it is a normal phenomenon because narrowing is a normal phenomenon. So, uh, Valsalva would be the correct answer. Valsalva, I know. Okay, thank you. Sir. Okay, any other doubt you want to ask? Okay, I think that is all about the second answer on you. Assessment S2 is the most important clinical evaluation in the diagnosis of congenital heart disease. You should be very careful. All patients who suspect congenital heart disease, you should very carefully look for the pattern of splitting of the second heart sound, audibility of the second heart sound, loudness of the second heart sound in the pulmonary area, and that will help you to make correct diagnosis. Okay, any doubts that you have? We can spend another 15 minutes asking if you have got any doubts about uh, uh, anything other than the second heart sound that we have discussed today. Uh, you can ask and the doubts can be cleared. Any doubts that you have? Uh, sir, uh, apart from second heart sound, there is a uh, question, sir. Uh, <clears throat> uh, sir, in multivalvular disease, uh, if uh, we are going for uh, uh, treatment part, uh, like in severe aortic stenosis uh, and the patient have severe mitral stenosis. So, which valve has to be opened up first uh, with uh, operative procedure and uh, percutaneous procedure, sir? Now, what, 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 what is your opinion? Uh, sir, uh, yeah, in a uh, 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 in a uh, patient, uh, if percutaneous procedure, we are going for percutaneous, then uh, aortic valve has to be opened up first and uh, mitral valve has to be opened up second. Why? Can you give the explanation? Uh, if we opened up the mitral valve, uh, then patient may have developed uh, uh, some uh, 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 mitral regurgitation or sometimes may have uh, suddenly opening of the mitral valve. Uh, uh, valve and uh, there is a lot uh, increase uh, there is a increase of uh, lv filling and uh, lv is not uh, uh, accommodated to that uh, volume as a uh, small end of stiffen lv uh, initially uh, so a patient may land up into the uh, 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 pulmonary edema uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, another point is uh, uh, there is a outflow obstruction as well so LV may not be uh, 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 accommodated to that large volume uh, after opening of the. You know, if, if, uh, I'm, I'm asking the reverse. Usually, when a patient is having severe mitral stenosis, severe aortic stenosis, we don't uh, do any interventional procedures. We usually send the patient for valve replacement. Okay, sir. So, but uh, I'm asking a, a theoretical question. If the patient is having uh, tricuspid stenosis and patient is having mitral stenosis. Which will which one will you tackle first? The mitral valve first. Yes, why? Uh, so, uh, uh, whatever the uh, after opening of the tricuspid valve, whatever the uh, 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 venous return uh, that is uh, increased, uh, that can be accommodated by the uh, LA, uh, LA left left atrium. Uh, 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 otherwise, a uh, stenosed mitral valve, uh, uh, if there is a steno severe stenosis, LA will not be uh, able to accommodate that large volume if the tricuspid valve is opened up first. Okay. 
Yes, if the tricuspid valve is opened up first, mm-hmm. the protective effect of the right side lesion, the first lesion, mm-hmm. on the lesion is lost. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly there is an increase in the RV output, that mm-hmm. will result in more volume of blood coming to the left atrium, mm-hmm. the pulmonary congestion, and the patient will develop acute. Uh, which, which lesion should you should tackle first? Uh, distal first. Distal first. So always that is the principle. Okay. So, I think you should tackle the distal first. So when you are having MS with AS, which one should you tackle first? Uh, distal one, sir. Distal yes. first. So it is a distal lesion that you should tackle first. So that okay. otherwise, if you uh, tackle the proximal lesion, sometimes the distal uh-huh. lesion will create problems and mm-hmm. then go for acute. Uh, yes. So always tackle the distal lesion first, then the proximal lesion. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. Any other doubts? Sir, in plasty also, so first distal plastic, then only the proximal. Eh? I could not follow your question. Sir, in plasty also, first distal region will do plasty, then only proximal. Sir, yes, sir. That, sir, is taking the that is the reason is different. Because uh, you may find it if you have tackled the first lesion, then uh, taking the stent for the second lesion may sometimes be difficult. Mm-hmm. So, of course, you, you may do sometimes the first lesion because if the patient has developed a dissection and has a, had a complication, then sometimes you may uh, stand the first lesion and then the second uh, lesion can be stended later. That can also happen because if there is a already wire in, in then you can take the stand through the stand provided the initial uh, the, the, the size of the stand that you are using is sufficiently big. But I agree with you that it is the distal lesion should be tackled first then the proximal lesion. Okay, any other doubts? Okay, I think then we will, because uh, the second heart sound is a short short discussion. But do you, uh, is it all clear to you what the, what the various patterns of the second heart sound? Uh, yes, Someone can ask you about paradoxical split, types of paradoxical split, how to differentiate, all those things should be very clear to you. Okay. Yes. And the mechanism of how the paradoxical split can happen, it can be due to delayed A2 or it can be due to an early P2. Similarly, white splitting also can be due to delayed uh, P2 and early A2. So, all those things should be very clear to you. Okay. So, next class, uh, what shall we do? Shall we have a presentation? One of you, can you uh, can you bring a case? Ronak, can you try once more? Or uh, somebody else, Agunath? Sir, I'll try, but uh, sir, uh, actually I'm not sure uh, because uh, uh, actually uh, I'll find, sir, I'll, uh, if, it, if there is, I will let you know before Sunday, sir. I'll, I have to find it out, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, excuse me, sir. Monica here. Oh, Good yeah. evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, sir, I'll be appearing for DNB exams. Uh, mm-hmm. I have completed my DM. Am I okay. eligible to present, sir? Oh, you, you can you can present because after all, we are bringing in a discussion. So, okay. presenting a case and discussing is uh, always useful to everybody. Okay, sir. Sir, so some complex congenital can I bring? Yes, it would be a pleasure to learn congenital heart disease from you, sir. Yes, yes, definitely. So, I think um, uh, you bring a case uh, uh, next week. You will be, I will tell them to uh, send the link to you so that you can share the screen and you can present the case. All right. All right, sir. Sure, sir. Okay, so next week, Monica will be presenting and uh, others can discuss and then finally we will come to a diagnosis. And then we will we'll find out whether the history can be properly analyzed and whether we can come to a proper diagnosis. It's some rare congenital, sir, which okay. we uh, rarely come across in adult, space, adult patients. Uh, so but somehow we, we can we'll, uh, go through history whether we can reach the diagnosis on the basis of history, just as a part of discussion. It does not matter. We may go wrong, but we can always do a logical analysis and try to uh, try to see the, the most important point about. Uh, bringing the, the analyzing the story is that when you examine the patient, you can specifically look for the signs which will help you to correct make the correct diagnosis. That's the most yes. important. Point. When you have got, for example, we have you have three or four differential diagnoses, 
then when you examine you will be carefully looking to find out whether you can make out something by means of which you can come to a correct diagnosis that's the most important point so i think complex congenital heart disease will be a real challenge and then we can discuss it no problem at all sure sir sure okay, that's great okay thank okay. you uh, uh, monica for uh, volunteering i knew that you have already cleared because you told me last week that you have cleared the dm examination Hmm. But sir, I am appearing for DNB next month, oh, and uh, I haven't started studying it. I am just attending your classes. That's all. Uh, but the, I think once you have cleared DM, I think the DNB should be walked through for you. There should not be any problem. Thank you so much. I try my best. Once you have been discussing and you have cleared the examination, that means you are you are in the correct track. And most of the students who have DM uh, pass uh, DM. Uh, when they appear for dnb they all all of them have cleared that is my experience because uh, i had been teaching dm students for a long period all my students who cleared the dm they appeared for dnb and all of them cleared without any problem so i am quite sure you will not have any difficulty thank you so much sir but sir it should be because of your teachings i don't know i do not know but i my teaching might have helped because i try to teach in uh, how to analyze things so that people will understand how the hemodynamics we go go with the clinical symptoms yes sir sure sir thank you so much sir okay, so next right. friday i'll present sir okay thank you monica thank you right yeah thanks thanks sir bye sir anybody no other doubts i think we'll uh, close the session any any doubts anybody would like to clear ask ask any doubts okay right now next week it is monica will be presenting and any anybody who would like to discuss the case Gaurav, would you like to discuss Gaurav Pandey or uh, uh, Ron? Ronak, would you like to discuss? Yes, sir. I will. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am. Yes, I was actually yes, in the bathroom, sir. Just now. Okay. So, uh, okay. Who, 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 who will discuss? Uh, one of you can discuss. Yes, sir. I will also be prepared. Some issues, sir. I will. Okay. Okay. That's great. So, see, well, unless you go on discussing. Uh, you will not have the confidence to uh, discuss the case in the examination. This is an area where you can pl make plenty of mistakes when you discuss. But in the examination, you can afford to make mistakes because that will cost you six months. Yes. So, so uh, here you can go on making mistakes, get corrected, and the examination you can confidently discuss the case and will be definitely through. If you are really discussing, I am quite sure that I can guarantee that you will be walking through the examination. Okay. Okay, right. Thank you. Okay, right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Yes, so so with your permission, shall we conclude the session? Yeah, we can conclude the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir.